very quiet. We don't want to scare this gray squirrel away. Hi, this is Jessica with Monroe County 4-H and welcome to my backyard. Okay friends, today we're going to go and explore my backyard, see what kinds of signs of animals we can find. So I am all ready. I have my handy dandy binoculars for seeing things from far away. I also have my handy dandy pocket guide from the Department of Environmental Conservation, Critters of New York. So let's go see what we can find. Alright, it's quite wet right now. It rained and snowed yesterday end of March and look at here looks like something came through here quite soggy I wonder what kinds of signs of animals we might find here hmm well let's see what do we see huh well there's my footprints maybe we can find some other footprints here well what do you know look at this these are interesting. We've got two parts. Two parts. See, this one's getting kind of deep in the front. Hmm. I wonder what that could be. It looks like something that might have a hoof. If we check in our guide, let's see. Could it be a moose? No, we don't have moose around here. Hmm. Fox? No, it doesn't look like a fox footprint. Hmm. Oh, there it is. White-tailed deer. Hmm. Yeah, about three inches. Hmm. I would say that's probably about three inches. Looks like a deer visited my home. Hmm. I wonder where it went. I just about stepped in this. Take a look at that. You know what that is? Yep. That is animal droppings. Also known as scat. And this right here looks like it's a deer. Looks pretty fresh too. Alright, well let's step around that. Alright, let's see what else we can find. Wait a second. Whoa. Whoa. Looks like some sort of fur. You see that? Huh. I wonder what kind of fur it is. Let's see, what color is it first of all? It looks like, yeah, that's right, white, gray, a little bit. Ends on the one side look darker than the ends on the other side. Huh. I'll have to check that when I get back too. Interesting. It looks like whatever bird was here got into a fight, or perhaps was caught by a predator. I'll have to check what kind of bird has that kind of feather. Hmm, what do you think? Well, that was my backyard. So, we saw a couple different signs of animals. Feathers, fur, footprints scat or droppings. Those are just a few things that can tell you if an animal's been around, even if you can't see them. As you saw, we scared away a bunch of the animals when we first came out. So, you know, it doesn't mean that they're not around if you can't see them, so why don't you try looking through your window? Or look for signs, like we just did. Now, let's go back inside and we'll learn a little bit about some common animals that you can see in your backyard. Okay, now that we're back inside, let's take a look at some of the animals that we saw. First, the gray squirrel. Now, gray squirrels are really interesting. Did you know that they can hide up to 25 different nuts or seeds in half an hour? And out of all of the ones that they hide, burying underground or in holes in trees, they usually found, find about four out of five again. And what is also interesting is that big bushy tail that you see, they use it to help keep balance. 
So you might see a lot of these out and about, even in the parks um, or wherever you go, but especially in your backyard. No. Okay, and do you remember that footprint we found? That's right, it was a white-tailed deer. White-tailed deer are very interesting animals because you usually don't see them much during the day. They come out most often where you can see them early in the morning and early evening, so right around the time that the sun is setting and just before. You can often find them grazing in open fields or your backyard maybe even. Who knows? But the white-tailed deer is so interesting because that tail there, which is white, is used to signal to other deer if there's danger present. If you ever see a white-tailed deer around and you startle it, you can see that white tail go up. Now, we also found that fur. I still am not 100% sure what it was, but my best guess was maybe a coyote. Coyotes are very, very hard to find, usually, because they tend to avoid people. But right now, in early March, it's just the end of the time when the coyotes are mating, and now they're getting ready to have little coyote pups. So it wouldn't be so unusual to see them running around, maybe, if you catch a glimpse. And the thing about coyotes is that their fur is usually gray and maybe like a grizzled sort of tip. So sometimes like a, uh, like a black or brown. They can come in different shades too. Um, but my thought is maybe that fur was from a coyote that came through. What do you think? Hmm. All right, so those are some interesting animals that we can find in our backyard. Now, when you find an animal, if you find a sign of an animal, a feather, scat, or even footprints, what do you do with all that information? Well, one good thing that you can do is make a nature journal. So let's make a nature journal together. Okay, so let's make this nature guide. What do you need? All right, you need a brown paper bag, various colored sheets of paper, some crayons, yarn, string, or a stapler, and a hole punch. So, let's get at it. First, take your brown paper bag and Fold it in half. This is going to be the cover to our book. Just like this. Now, we're going to use the inside to store all sorts of fun things that we find when we're outside. So a feather or a leaf. Just be careful, don't take too much. It's not good to take too much from the outdoors because you're not going to leave anything else for other people to find. Sometimes it's better to just take a picture or to draw, which we're also going to do. Next, take your colored pieces of paper. If you're using a regular size piece of construction paper, oh, I forgot, you need scissors. <laughs> if you have a big piece of construction paper, you need to cut it in half so that you have half sheet size. Now, that half sheet, you're going to fold in half. And fold every one of your pages, all your colors that you want to use for the inside pages, fold in half. Okay. All right. And now you can either put them together like this inside of each other and this will give you alternating color pages so green blue orange yellow back to yellow pink or you can make them one at a time so if you want all four yellow pages first put that together all four orange pages 
like that. And then you can have many different color pages in whatever order you want. So once you have them in the order that you like, you are going to hole punch. I'm going to take my hole puncher and I'm going to do one or two pages at a time and line it up in the hole puncher. So I have a two hole punch, so I want to make sure that the holes are not going to be off on the, the bottom. I want it to be kind of centered. Okay. Yes. Just like that. Okay, and then do it for all of them. Okay, and then finally do it for your brown paper bag too. So not on the outside edge, but the inside fold. Sometimes it's a little hard because there's essentially four layers of paper in there. And make sure it's pushed all the way back so you don't get it on the outside edge. Just like that. Okay, now we put it together. So just put your pages inside. And if you're using a triple hole punch, they should be able to line up really easily. If you're using a single hole punch, just be careful to make sure that they're spread the same amount of um, the same amount of distance apart when you're making them. Okay, so now we have to put our book together. So you can see that there is a hole down here. Let's see, we'll focus. There you go. Um, it doesn't line up exactly flush, but you can see there's space there. And what we're going to do is cut a piece of string or yarn okay and I would say probably about your hand should be good that should be long enough you can do it with shorter but it's a little harder to tie it and then just pull it through the hole And I would maybe even double tie it. Okay. And you can use different color string for each one. You could even hole punch. It would be a little hard to make sure that it was even on e each one, but you'd hole punch all the way down and then like sew it in and out. That's another way. Be creative. All right, and put the string through the last one. Come on. There you go. And tie right there. Awesome. All right. And now you basically have your nature guide and you can draw pictures of what you see outside on the pages inside and write notes. You can draw and decorate your cover with your crayons like I did for mine and just use it. Take it along with you outside if you want. Sit outside if it's a nice day and you can sketch and draw whatever you find or you can collect something interesting in here. All right. Thank you for watching the Backyard Nature Guide with Monroe County 4-H. Please check out future videos on Monroe County 4-H YouTube channel and also on Finger Lakes Learning Launchpad. Hope to see you again.